watch a lot of videos for y'all watch mine. But I guarantee you this is gonna make you laugh if you haven't already did. But let's go. Let's not wait no longer. Let's get it, man. So, what do you think of when you hear mural? Do you think of something that can speak a million words in a large platform like this Bansky artwork on the side of a building? Or do you think of something that's really pointless on a large platform like this mural of Spongebob and his guys? Truth is, murals can be anything painted on a large surface. So much for the historical beginning, huh? But the artwork I'm evaluating is much more special and more creative. It's definitely something that will have you thinking long and hard. Hey, I enjoy researching about it and I don't even like reading. There it is. Isn't it a beauty? I mean, just look at it. What mastermind, what virtuoso could come up with something so exquisite, so enthralling? Yeah, I'm using big words that's out of my vocabulary, but that's besides the point. The name of this mastermind that came up with this appealing piece of art is called Jose Clemente Orozco. Jose was a Mexican painter that specialized in creating murals. Note, I said specialized in creating murals. Born in 1833 and raised in Mexico, Jose was inspired to be an artist since he was a little kid. He was inspired by a political painter named Jose Posada. There's really no pictures of him back in the day because there was no picture back in the day. <laughs> Bruh, I'm talking 1830s. But Orozco was inspired by the way Posada decorated his engraving paintings and that made him understand the use of color. Jose Posada was a political cartoonist. He would paint or draw cartoons for local newspapers. His local newspapers were so powerful that after 11 issues, he had to close them because they had offended powerful politicians. As you could tell by his artwork, he used a lot of skeletons. Hmm. Remind you of something? I'm gonna let you think about that for five to 10 seconds. back thought right now if you did you would have thought of my artwork guys in the modern world it would be fair to say that Roscoe got his use of skeletons in my artwork from Posada Jose Clemente was the leader of this artist movement called Mexican muralism Mexican muralism started in the 1920s it is a movement when artists would convey social political measures on large buildings they would put it on large buildings to try and reunify the country under the post-Mexican revolution. It was Orozco, Diego Rivera, and David Siquiro. They all painted murals on large buildings conveying the Mexican revolution. Orozco, however, painted more about the bloody toll the Mexican revolution took, and he was less comfortable with it, while Diego and David painted more about the optimistic look on the revolution, and they wanted to glorify the revolution. Education in Mexico in the 1930s was not going so well. In fact, the literacy rate was 33% for those older than 6 years of age, compared to the U.S., which was about 95% literacy rate. The literacy rate is the ability to read and write in a percentage. There's not a lot of information about why this was so low, but from research, you can make the inference that because of the Mexican Revolution, it might have took a big toll on the education system, or at least affected a little bit, maybe a lot. We have to be talking about murals and Mexican murals for a reason. My artwork, The Gods of the Modern World, is a part of a mural called The Epic of American Civilization. The Epic of American Civilization tells a story about the impact of Native Americans and European colonists on North America. It also talks about the impact of the Mexican Revolution and the industrialization on the human spirit. It is located in Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. On Dartmouth campus, it is in the basement of Baker Memorial Library. Here's some more pieces of this extravagant mural. Ah, great right. Almost great as me in 2K. Right, Cash Nasty? Hold on, one second. 
Just let me get a drink of water real quick. Throw kind of parch. Mm. One more sip. Don't rush me. Alright, let's go. Back to my one piece of artwork though. What do you see when you're literally looking at this artwork for the first time? What's your first impressions? I'm gonna let you think about that for a good 15 seconds. Now I'll come back to y'all. Doom, 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 doom. Done yet? Now you see somebody like me. The first thing you just saw is some skeletons giving birth. But it's much more than that. Look at all the baby skeleton embryos around the mother skeleton. Look at how every one of the skeletons that's not giving birth is wearing a graduation robe. Notice how it's flames behind the graduation robe skeletons too. Obviously, the focal point of this artwork is the mother skeleton giving birth to the baby skeletons. The flames in the background have an applied line and have a warm color scheme. I guess to give it the real fire effect, but in real life, it really wouldn't be like that. The books on the bottom have an organic shape, almost making it look like it's kind of cartoonish, almost like Posada would create a creator, except he was on a political cartoon. Hint, <laughs> wink, wink. Nah, that was just over cringe. The skeletons in the front with the graduation caps are overlapping the flames, and the skeletons in the front with the mother skeleton giving birth are overlapping the other skeletons in the back. That's a lot of skeletons I just said. Whew. Whew. Dang the skeletons. Also, Orozco used reputation in this use of skeletons and graduation caps. I believe that Orozco's belief in the education system is that it is thorough. And he believes that the American education system is dead in a way because the knowledge that we teach is really useless and really outdated. Dead knowledge. I couldn't agree with this any more than I already do. The stuff we teach is really pointless at some times. Outdated stuff that we are not gonna need in the future. Unless you're trying to be a history teacher like Jamil. <laughs> yeah. But we need to call on a more creative use of knowledge. Just like Roscoe is saying, he wants to call on a more creative use of knowledge, learn how to pay bills, and learn how to take care of daily responsibilities as we become young adults. And now, uh, my interpretation of God's in modern world is that it is an artwork that has all to do about education. The artwork is showing how education is passed down generation to generation, but it's the same outdated stuff. The education system today is focused on the past world and not what's going on in the world right now. Like in Roscoe's time, the Mexican Revolution. And here's my artwork. Miss Lisa might recognize this. But this artwork has everything to do with the gods of the modern world to me. Because we basically going through the same stuff. That book you see on the top of my face. That is my music book. It's the most boring class ever. Yes. In music, all we learn about is the history of music. We don't play any instruments. We don't play any songs. We just learn about the history of music and its composers. It's the most boring thing ever. This has everything to do with the God of the modern world to me because Orozco depicts the same stuff. He talks about what he's depicting, how education is getting passed down generation to generation, and it's outdated. All right, that's the end. I thank y'all for sitting here and watching this. If it didn't make y'all laugh one time, I'm sorry. You get to slap me, like I said in the beginning of the video. 
But thank you for watching this, and thank you, Miss Lisa, for helping me so much with this artwork. And I'm out. Peace.